Long ago, Gilneas was one of the most powerful human kingdoms, isolated for decades only to be completely destroyed by the Forsaken during Cataclysm. Since then, it has been a mess, but mostly abandoned. However, as the Alliance won the battle for Azeroth and the Forsaken presence is now weaker than ever, is there a possibility that Gilneas will be restored following our adventures in the Shadowlands? Brought to you by Gamivo.com. Make sure to click the link in the description and get Shadowlands as well as game time at discounted prices. So, in the simplest terms, Gilneas is one gigantic mess. After the Orcish Wars, the kingdom was completely isolated with a massive wall, but then over time the Forgan Curse started spreading and eating the kingdom from within. Then Catastrophe, or should I say Cataclysm hit, and their wall was entirely shattered. As Sylvanas just got a fresh new deal with the Jailer, she realized this is gonna be new free real estate. So not only did Sylvanas invade, but she decided to also test out her plague and with the warmonger and Garrosh leading the horde, it was a huge operation. The battle itself was one long, drawn out bloody mess and I'd say overall inconclusive. Blizzard has kind of been inconsistent with the status of Gilneas, but we do have some recent activities and confirmations and hints. So initially, it was said that the alliance did manage to maintain ground, but then we know all Vorgan pretty much abandoned it and settled first with the Night Elves and then later in Storm. Then, around that time when we were fighting in Argus, Gilneas was said to be nothing but wind, sorrow, abandoned ruin with a forsaken presence. However, Cataclysm happened, what, over a decade ago, and since then, Gilneas went from abandoning the Alliance and barely even getting an audience with Varian Brynn, to pretty much becoming the second most powerful person of the faction. Since then, taking his kingdom back has been his largest mission and a dream. Sylvanas even wanted to piss him off by pointing at the division on where to send forces either to Teldrassil or Gilneas, but Ken decided that Teldrassil is first going to be a priority in order to pay their debts to the Night Elves that saved them long ago. So in context, this obviously tells us that there is a significant drive to get Gilneas back up and running. Well, fast forward to Battle for Azeroth and we finally have some activity, not a full on crusade, but a decent sized campaign. First of all, Alliance essentially conquered Lordaeron and launched a massive invasion. Then Shadowfang Keep was surrounded by the Alliance in order to prevent a bioweapon from attacking and plaguing Gilneas. Furthermore, Darius Crowley, essentially the second in command to Gen, led a Gilnean army into Hillsbred and marched against the sludge fields in order to prevent the undead from amassing. Gilneas was again a point of interest due to its proximity in the battle for Lordaeron. However, the battle itself didn't center around Gilneas, but instead the Horde decided to preemptively strike Strongguard in order to weaken Alliance presence. They did this for two reasons. First off, to obviously expand their own influence, and second, to weaken the Alliance, since now the Alliance essentially destroyed the Forsaken Stronghold under city, they got some forces in Gilneas, and Stromgard was becoming a significant local power. This more than obviously looked like a huge threat as the alliance could consolidate their power significantly over the eastern kingdoms and then the horde would just be screwed to put it lightly. Well, ultimately, the alliance did win the battle for Azeroth and they pretty much did this exactly. The battle for Stromgard went in the alliance's favor, under the city was blighted, well by Sylvanas, but there was this entire invasion and most of the surrounding land was scorched and Sylvanas ultimately abandoned the Forsaken, so they're pretty much weaker than they ever were. I'm not saying there isn't a horde presence in the north, but currently it is pretty much ripe for alliance conquest. Now, to top everything off, the peace-loving Adrian is currently serving the Jailer, and the leader of the alliance is Terelian, you know, a light zealot that is actually a member of Lordaeron nobility. I've talked about this in another video, but there seems to be a lot of indications that Lordaeron restoration could be possible following the Shadowlands, and in this campaign, Gildneas could no doubt play a significant part. If if there is such a thing as a time skip after this expansion, then I'd say a crusade type invasion could entirely be possible. Quick recap is that the alliance 
essentially won the war, they control most of the Eastern Kingdoms, and Gilnea's restoration has long been planned and awaited. Seeing that Gen Greyman is now one of the most powerful characters of the faction, I think his mission to get his kingdom back could entirely be possible. Now, I don't believe the Alliance plans to, you know, just get Gilnea's back, but if there is a Lord Run campaign, I have no doubts that Gilnea's will play a huge role in that plan, mainly due to his strategic location, but also historical significance. I think this could also be quite easy for the Alliance as well. First off, they are already there to an extent. They have a really powerful stronghold now, Stromgard, which could act as a stage account for Ganeas, which is exactly what the Horde feared in the past. Now, I doubt they would launch an invasion while this entire ordeal is going on with the Shadowlands, but after, I think it is quite possible and it would be a great way to refresh some of the old zones. Seeing that Blizzard confirmed that the Alliance won't be getting Teldrassil back, I think this might be decent the payment. Interestingly enough, Battle for Azeroth, if you don't remember, only came to a ceasefire, sort of a truce, so if there are actual peace talks, like concrete peace talks, later the Alliance might demand the restoration of Gilneas, which could avoid all conflict and a future Horde Alliance war. The only fear I kinda have is that Gilneas doesn't end up like Nomrigan, being retaken and rebuilt for, like what, the last 15 years. However, I do have an interesting counter theory, hear me out on this, what if Gilneas is not retaken by the Alliance, but actually the Forsaken. I think this might actually be a possibility. The Forsaken essentially lost their home, Undercity, and half of all zones they held, and if the threat arises from Gilneas, they're now completely surrounded. So the Forsaken might actually launch a full-on desperate invasion on Gilneas in order to turn it into a new Undercity, in order to consolidate order power, as they really have no chance to hold all these fronts at the same time from the south, the north, the west, the east. Might be a bit of a stretch, but I think it could be an interesting theme for a future Horde Alliance war. Thank you for watching! Check out if the Restoration of Lord Orange is also possible by clicking on the screen and also check out Orange Academy for videos on real world history and science. See you next time!